On behalf of so many that call Waterview Church their home and on behalf of the hundreds who are a part of our growing Waterview Church family, let me just say how honored and delighted we are that you're engaging with us today for Waterview Online. And we just want you to feel right at home and we want you to receive the encouragement, the strength, the direction, and the spiritual growth that you're needing in your life right now. We believe that you're here for a reason. It's not by accident that you're engaging with us today. So just let me say welcome. My name is Jason Bentley. I serve as the lead pastor. And let me tell you something about our church. We are not a church where people are just here to fill seats. We are here because we're trying to fulfill a mission and God's called us to do something great and God's called us to do something powerful. We wanna invite you into everything that God has for you. So let me tell you about Launch. Launch is an experience that we offer to everyone that's wanting to know more about our church, looking to get more involved, looking to discover what exactly God wants to do in them and through them. And so there's a link coming up below that will give you a little more information about Launch and will also give you the chance to access it, those of you that are a part of our online family, to give you a chance to participate with our digital experience. If you're a part of our in-person gatherings, we host launch the first, second, and third Sunday of every month, step one, step two, and step three. But to those of you in our online family, you can access launch digitally, and there's a link there. Click it, you'll get more info, you can start plan a part in the plan that God has for your life. Let me encourage you, this faith of ours, this thing that we're doing, it's not a spectator sport. God is wanting you to lean in and he's wanting you to engage. So you are welcome to be a part of all that we're doing. We're going into worship right now. And I do wanna say for those of you that are new, we are so thankful you're here. We consider you to be a VIP and there is a link coming up below which is a digital connection card. Hey, do us a favor, just take a moment and click that link and give us your basic contact information. We're not gonna do anything weird with it. We're gonna keep it in-house, not gonna share it. We're gonna pray over you and we're gonna just keep you connected with all that God is doing through our church. Take a moment and fill that out. This is a safe place, you can trust us. And if you've been around for any length of time, we want to connect with you. We're serious about life-giving relationships. So to all of our VIPs, big shout out. We love you. We're, we're glad that you're here. We exist for you. So now we're going to worship. And for those of you that are preparing to sing, great. For those of you that are ready to clap, lift your hands, great. But before we do that, one way that we worship it's a big way that we worship around here it's through our giving ways that you can give are coming up on the screen but we worship god with our finances in fact we believe that every part of our life it's all meant to be worship to god in fact the bible says this in, in the book of romans that we are to present our bodies as living sacrifices as living acts of worship so every part of us is meant to worship god even our finances and it takes a lot of money to be able to reach people to be able to bring people fully alive lead them to flourish and equip them to live fulfilled so thank you for partnering with the vision of our house with the vision that god put on our hearts to change the world we love you so much come on let's worship god together right now where you are Summer's a great time to just love on Jesus. I love you, Lord, for your mercy never fails me all my days. I've been held in hands from the moment that I wake up until I lay my head I will sing of the goodness of God all my life you have been faithful thank you Jesus and all my So good with every 
every breath that I am able, I'm going to see of the goodness of God. I've known you as a father, I've known you as a friend, I have lived in the goodness of God. And all my life you have been faithful, and all my life you have been so, so good with every breath that I am able I will see of the goodness of God your goodness is running after it's running after me your goodness is running after it's running after my life laid down, I'm surrendered now, I give you everything, your goodness is running after, it's running after me, it's running after me, that no matter where I go, your goodness and your mercy will follow me all the days of my life, thank you Jesus. Cause your goodness and your mercy is following me oh thank you Jesus and all my life you have been faithful Ooh, thank you God cause all my life you have been so so good with every breath I am able, I will sing of the goodness of God. I will sing of the goodness of God. No, I will sing of the goodness of God. so fired up today to begin this new series from the book of Acts. I cannot tell you how just excited I am to share with you this word that God has placed on my heart. So go ahead and open up the digital worship guide there in your Waterview app. Maybe you've got a Bible. Get, get a notepad, get a pen. Come on, we're going to take notes today because note takers are history makers. We're going to lean in and listen to what God is wanting to say to us. I want to direct your attention to Acts chapter number eight. There are 28 chapters in the book of Acts. It's a fast paced book filled with all kinds of incredible things. It's exciting. And today we're going to begin in Acts chapter number eight. It says in verse number one, and Saul agreed to be an accomplice to Stephen's stoning and participated in his execution. 
And from that day on, a great persecution of the church in Jerusalem began. And all the believers scattered into the countryside of Judea and among the Samaritans, except the apostles who remained behind in Jerusalem. Then Saul mercilessly persecuted the church of God, going from house to house into the homes of believers to arrest both men and women and drag them off to prison. But although the believers were scattered by persecution, they preached the wonderful news of the word of God wherever they went. And that part there, we cannot overlook. It is not inconsequential. And this is going to be really the focus of what I want to talk with you about today. Although the believers were scattered by persecution, and that is certainly a a big although. Although the believers were scattered by persecution, they preached the wonderful news of the word of God wherever they went. So today we're looking at the book of Acts, and I've just got to tell you, it is my favorite book in all of the Bible. And it's for many reasons that I I consider the book of Acts my favorite and why I've been looking so forward to getting into this with you. The book of Acts really documents the beginning of God's church here on the earth. As you know, Jesus comes, he's born of a virgin in a manger, lives a sinless life for 33 years. He's mercilessly murdered and crucified, buried in the ground, comes back to life after three days. He hangs around because he's got some, some parting things that he wants to leave with his followers. He's getting ready to go back to heaven. This is a big deal. It's a transitional time. And he says, look, I'm going to, I'm going to set you loose. I'm going to turn you loose in the earth. You're going to be a continuation of what I got started. You're, you're not a, you're not an organization. You're an organism. You're going to be alive and you're going to grow and you're going to take over. You're going to infiltrate. That's my plan for you. I've got big plans. I want you to go and I want you to share my love and I want you to share my word everywhere. And everyone that believes it, I want you to baptize them and I want you to turn them into disciples. I want you to go into all the world and I want you to go after every single person on the planet. And then Jesus ascends back into heaven and now the church is here on the earth. Now the church starts off small, but we see that it begins to rapidly grow. And it not only takes over Palestine, not only takes over Israel there in the Middle East, it begins to spread throughout the known world. And and in in, in a very short period of time, the then known world hears all about Jesus and people are putting their faith in Jesus, are turning away from false gods, false idols, false beliefs, and they're turning to Jesus and they're beginning to to live and experience the abundant life that Jesus promised. And all of this, this spread of the church, this growth of the church and God's working in the midst of them and miracles and healings, all kinds of exciting things. It's all documented in the book of Acts. And listen, when I read the book of Acts, it reminds me of a few things. The, the, the most important is, is that if you right now are a follower of Jesus, if you are a part of the church, you and I, we are a part of something extraordinary. You know, I know that there is a, uh, there's been a lot of talk and a lot of conversation here and abroad, all over the world after this whole pandemic season and where churches were unable to gather. There's been a lot of talk about whether or not the church has seen its best days, that perhaps the church is in decline, perhaps the church has a very bleak future. But I want to tell you here today, when you read the book of Acts, you are reminded that what we are a part of is extraordinary. We are the body of Christ here on the earth, and he has commissioned us, and he has empowered us to run in his strength, with his authority, and in his power. In fact, he told us that we would do greater things 
than he did. I'm going to just tell you right now, as I've been going through the book of Acts again, preparing for our time together, I, I am encouraged about the future of the church. Our best days are not behind us. We are going to continue moving God's church forward until Jesus returns, until he comes back just as he promised. But until then, we're going to continue to reach people. We're going to continue to see hearts touched and lives changed. We're going to continue to see communities transformed. We're going to continue to see families restored. Great things are going to continue to happen. And I am absolutely thrilled. It is a privilege that I get to be a part of it. And I'm thankful that you're at least interested enough to to listen, to hear more about it. If you're not yet a part of it, you can be a part of it. And the way you get a part of this organism, this living, breathing, powerful thing called the church is simply just to put your faith in Jesus and be united with Jesus in baptism because baptism is what places you a part of the church. And Waterview Church, which I am thankful for and I am privileged to lead, it is just one part of God's global church. There's a global church and then there's the local church and all of the local churches, Waterview Church is one of them. We make up this global church and it is the hope of the world. God chose to do what he wanted to do in the earth through the church. And I know that some people have had some bad experiences here and there, a part of the church. I know that in some areas, the church has got a bad rap and people are kind of down on the church. But man, it is the church that God said was gonna be his representation here. And we are the ones that are meant to carry his message carry his grace, carry his truth. And it's the church, the church of Jesus Christ, that's going to see God do amazing things. And let me tell you this, in addition to just being reminded of what a privilege it is to be a part of God's church, let me tell you one more thing. God has an unstoppable church. And beyond that, God wants you to live an unstoppable life. I believe this and I am convinced of this because of what we read in the book of Acts. This exciting New Testament documentary about the original church, it shares such amazing events, such inspirational miracles, such dramatic examples of people impacting the world. When I I read of healings, when I read of great outpourings of the Holy Spirit, when I read of God just doing supernatural things, the church is alive, it's on fire. When I see mass conversions taking place, people leaving behind a, a dead life of false religion and, and, and temporary pleasures, when I see them leaving behind all of that and stepping into what God intends for their life. I start, to be honest with you, I start envisioning when I read through Acts from chapter one all the way to chapter eight, I start, I can't help myself, I start envisioning Waterview Church having similar experiences. I don't know if if you heard it as we kind of started our time together today, but I'll tell you this about our church. We're, we're not a church of, of members just filling seats. We're a church where the people are fulfilling a mission. We are on mission because we're a part of the church. The church some somehow, some way got removed from its roots in the book of Acts and it became more about being a social club and more about a country club than it was about displaying God's power and carrying out God's work in the earth. And when I read about all these things happening in Acts, I can't help but envisioning Waterview right in the mix of all of that and seeing that happen. We love you. We love our city. We're not just another church in our city. We're a church that is for our city. We want to see city transformation. We want to see 
people's lives get changed. Man, we, we're really wanting to, to see God's power display. We, we believe that Jesus is the answer to all of the problems that people are facing in our society, whether it's loneliness or addiction or depression or anxiety, whatever it is, Jesus is the answer and that comes through the church. So we're invested in serving in our community, feeding people, and we're invested in helping people grow in freedom. There's so many different things. That's why I can't help but envision Waterview experiencing similar things. I want you, those of you that are watching today and engaging with us, I want you to enjoy what it means to live a life of significance. I want you to step into a place where you begin to make your life matter, where you enjoy the fulfillment that only comes through discovering your purpose and beginning to make a difference. I want you to live a life of influence. And it's possible, but there is a secret. And we find that secret in the book of Acts. You may be wondering, how exactly do I recreate this scenario in my own life where I'm just doing powerful things and, uh, and I'm driven by a cause and uh, I'm, I'm seeing results as the result of it. How do I recreate this scenario? How do I live unstoppable. How does my church, maybe you're a part of another church elsewhere and you're wondering how can my church resemble the church in the book of Acts? How can we be unstoppable? And I've got to tell you, there has been a lot of effort and there's been a lot of money and there has been a lot of energy that has gone into figuring that out. When people read the book of Acts, they want to know what's the secret sauce? What's the magic bullet? What exactly is the formula? I mean, there are conferences galore all over the world trying to, to figure that out. What do we got to do to experience the power of God in our world? What do we got to do to see our cities transform? What do we got to do to have the kind of book of Acts results in our church right now in the 21st century? And I submit this to you today. I don't want to be guilty of oversimplifying or trivializing this question, but I, I do want you to notice what this book is, is called. I think a lot can be ascertained just from the title. It's called the book of Acts, the book of, of actions, because what we're reading are the acts or the actions of the apostles, the, the acts of Jesus's followers. And these were just everyday men and women, just like you and I, who worked and went to school and were immersed in a community, went shopping, had to get groceries, had sick children, everyday men and women who were saved by Jesus Christ and who decided, they made a decision at one point in time when they heard the commission that was given by Jesus they made the decision that their strategic partnership with the Holy Spirit was going to be used to make a difference and to make their life count. We say here at Waterview, make their life matter. And, and there's a lot of different things that we could talk about, but I today for this first week, I want to look at it from a 50,000 foot view. The main thing that I believe made this early church, the original church successful, that made them unstoppable, that's going to make you unstoppable, that's going to make our churches unstoppable right now. Acts chapter number eight reveals it to us. As we were reading through those first four verses of Acts chapter eight, we see a very sharp contrast. We see two different groups and what they were committed to. The first group involves a man by the name of Saul who is a part of what is known as the Sanhedrin. And then on the other side, we have God's church. And as we're reading what is transpiring historically, Saul and the Sanhedrin understand that they were a council. They were like judges. And according to tradition and history, the Sanhedrin were supposed to meet together every single day except for 
Saturdays except for the Sabbath and for holy days, they were supposed to meet together every single day and they were supposed to judge matters affecting national security. They were the leaders, they were a council, they were a think tank, so to speak, and their job was to just oversee the the care, the health, and the welfare of the nation of Israel. But because of what is happening with Jesus, because what is happening with Peter and John and the rest of Jesus' disciples, now that Jesus is gone as they're preaching, they have shifted their attention away from governing the lives of the people, overseeing things of national security, of supreme importance, and they've now shifted their attention to taking care of what is happening, what they're hearing about in the streets, that people are giving their lives to Jesus. They're turning to Jesus. Saul and these religious leaders are reacting to things that are really outside of their focus. Remember, I just I just shared with you that their focus were things of national importance, things involving war, issues that would deal with whole entire tribes. That's supposed to be what they were focusing on. But they get distracted, and because they're distracted, they react. And instead of meeting together, and worrying about affairs of state and worrying about things that are important to people like their food and their education, their health and welfare, they get in the persecution business. They get in the execution business and they start going after Christians to throw them in prison to like they did Stephen who was stoned they took his life. Now, how does a council, how does a Supreme Court get into the execution business? How do they go from meeting every day to take care of their nation to hunting people down, trying to go from house to house and root out those who have said that they believe in Jesus? It's because they were reacting. Now, God's church, on the other hand, they are the one receiving the persecution. They are the ones that are being scattered. But the Bible says, although they are persecuted and although they are scattered, they continue preaching the message of Jesus. I love that in the face of negative things happening, adversity and obstacles, they just continue doing what they had always done. Their, their circumstances did not dictate or affect what it is that they were doing. They just continued doing what Jesus had told them to do. They continued on mission. They continued following the playbook despite all of those negative circumstances in their environment. They keep acting on what they were assigned to do and what's gonna continue to impact lives and get them closer to fulfilling the bottom line, which was reaching the whole world with this message of Jesus. And herein lies the difference between an unstoppable life and an ordinary life. Listen, if you want Book of Acts kind of results in your faith, if you want Book of Acts kind of results in your business, in your education, and something that you're responsible to lead. Listen, Book of Acts kind of results stem from being committed to acts, committed to actions. It stems from intentional actions, strategic activities, and proactive contributions. And the thing that I wanna ask you here today that I really want you to consider, and I want you to mull over as you consider what we read in Acts 8, and then you juxtapose that with your own life and where you are right now. If we were to read the story of your life, if we were to, to kind of go through your history and investigate your pattern, would it look more like the book of Acts or would it look like the book of Reacts? And what I mean by that is, are you living intentional or are you living reactionary 
the majority of the time. You see, there is a big difference between acting and reacting. When you act, when you're committed to actions like the church was in Acts chapter number eight and throughout the book of Acts, you are making an original contribution. There is forethought, there's planning, there's strategy, you're being proactive. There is an inner mandate that is causing you to be the creator of an outer stimulus. Like you are the one involved in making things happen. When you act, you are engaging as a catalyst. You are pursuing something noteworthy. There's a higher calling that's governing you. It's governing the decisions that you make. There is a far more noble purpose that is motivating you. I'm sure you've heard of the butterfly effect. Well, when you're committed to acts, when you are committed to actions, and when the tsunami of honor and generosity and kindness and hospitality hits somewhere around the world, it can be traced back to something that you initiated. That's what acts are. It's things you initiate. You are the one behind. You are creating it. You are initiating it. To act simply means that you operate from a driving sense of purpose. Just like those there in Acts chapter number eight, they had a sense of purpose on their life. And whether they were being hunted from house to house, persecuted or not, the purpose remained. And, and a great sense of purpose will produce a great passion, even in small places. You're, you're going to find that no matter what's going on in your life, that sense of purpose will drive you to just continue to do what you know you need to do and what you realize are going to produce the outcome. You see, the will of God it's not a map on the age of empires and it's not a map on risk where you wait, where you wait to see what others are going to do in order to plot your next course of action. That would be reactive. No, the will of God is a match. You move because you've been set on fire. You go and you do because you heard God's voice. You, you go and you make things happen because you realize that God is with you. And if he is for you, then who can be against you? However, when you start looking more like Saul and the Sanhedrin, when you react, when you get off course, when you get pulled away from what you're supposed to do, you live your life from a posture of, I'm going to wait to see what happens. I'm going to wait to see what stimuli occur, and then I'm going to respond. It's a, a wait and see. I'll wait on something to happen, then I'll respond. A reactionary life, it lets outer stimuli cloud and detract from your inner mandate. When you react, you ignore the inner mandate and instead just respond to different things happening in your environment and every single one of us and, and maybe it's happened within the last 48 hours but every one of us we already know at a very basic level the tyranny of the urgent for our life to to be dominated by something that creates this sense of urgency in us but is really in the grand scheme of things not that important and what a mistake what a huge mistake it is to sacrifice the important for the immediate. And that might be an agenda, something that you've set out to do. You've got a to-do list and you're wanting to cross things off. You're going to be productive only for that to be interrupted by a ringing telephone or the, or the sound that you've got an, an email in your inbox and it has absolutely nothing to do with what you are needing to get done that day. And yet, even though we've been victimized by the tyranny of the urgent, how many of us are being lured into a life of reacting? We're being pulled off mission. 
We're being pulled off focus. We're being lured into a life of reacting. Maybe that's to family. Maybe we got some family drama going on. Maybe it's current events. For far too long, we've been responding on social media and elsewhere about current events and we're, we're reacting to it. Maybe it's something with our coworkers. We're hearing you know, rumors through the grapevine, rumors popping up by the water cooler. Maybe it's peer pressure. But all of us, we've at some time and maybe even now, you're being lured into a life of reacting and you're chasing insignificant rabbits that daily are popping up instead of setting the agenda that keeps us running the race that God has set before us, pursuing the vision that he laid out for us, the, the priorities that we have established and making his calling the compass of our life. We are called to a much higher and much more noble purpose, but we're allowing petty things to distract us from really making a difference. The reason that the church was so successful, the reason the church was so dynamic throughout the book of Acts was because they refused to be pulled off of mission. They refused to react. They refused to respond to the, the different challenges and adversities that would pop up as they were pursuing what God had called them to do. What I hope you'll see here today as you're thinking about your faith, as you're thinking about our church, as you're, as you're thinking about leading a business, being a leader, making a difference in life, leading a family, I want to help you see that continued relevance and impact or obscurity, eventually being a non-entity and just going away, dropping off the scene, never to be remembered again, it hinges on your and I's ability to manage our response to events in our environment. Today, we're still talking about the church. We're still focusing on the church because they were acting, not reacting. Only a Bible scholar would even know who the Sanhedrin are. They're irrelevant. They're non-entities, and it's because they continued to react. They continue to be pulled off and away from what they were supposed to be doing. Consider this, God has favorites, but you get to decide if you're one of them or not. You get to decide if you're going to be unstoppable. You get to decide whether or not you're going to have impact. You get to decide whether or not you're going to be fruitful and you're going to live fulfilled. And here's how. I want to leave this big idea with you today. A reactive life it provokes you to abandon your focus and your defined goals, while a proactive life safeguards priorities. And I want to be a part of the book of Acts. I want to be proactive, and we got to safeguard our priorities. Right now, across the world, in Milan, Italy, there is a great Gothic cathedral there. It's beautiful and it has three doors, three main doors as you go to enter into it. Those doors, there are engraved three inscriptions. Over the right hand door, written above it, there is this motto, all that pleases is but for a moment. And then written over the left hand archway is this inscription, all that troubles is but for a moment. And then there is one last door directly in the center. And over the center door, there is this inscription, nothing is important except that which is eternal. And honestly, those three same realities are playing out in our life right now. If we're going to react, we're going to get distracted and we're going to chase things that are pleasurable or things that are causing us trouble. But if we're going to act and if we're going to if we're going to continue to stay focused, we're going to realize that nothing is important. That's how you that's how you continue to act in the face of things 
trying to pull you away. You realize that nothing is important except that which is eternal. So listen, if we're going to be the book of Acts instead of the book of Reacts, we must be uncompromisingly devoted to Acts. And it's an acronym, A-C-T-S. If the church is going to remain relevant, if the church is going to remain powerful, if Waterview Church is going to be what Lake Norman needs, then the people in our community, what they are deep down looking for and what they are desperately needing when it comes to faith and spirituality, when it comes to having a true encounter with God, we've got to be devoted to acts. No matter what happens in the world, we have to be devoted to adoration. And we talked about that a couple of weeks ago. We talked about worship. We've got to be a church that's passionate about worshiping our Jesus passionately worshiping the King of all kings and the Lord of all lords. We've got to be devoted to adoration. We've got to be devoted to community. Listen, I know that we're going into the summertime and we're traveling and our normal routines are interrupted by vacations and things of that nature, but we must not allow ourselves to be dissuade or turned away from community. Gathering together in a faith community to worship Jesus and to enjoy life-giving relationships within the context of a building called going to church, being a part of a church, it's important. Being in small groups, which our church is a church of small groups. We love groups. Groups are a part of everything that we do. We have a small group semester in the spring. We have a small group semester in the fall. It is vital. We've got to stay in community. We cannot let ourselves be lured into thinking that we can run this race, that we can be strong spiritually, that our faith can be enriched, isolated, and separate and apart from the greater body of Christ. We're only fooling ourselves. Growth and progress does not happen in isolation. It takes community. And that's why we want you to be a part of what we're doing. You've got to be committed to community. And we've got to be committed to, to theology. We've got to be committed to the truth of God's word. There's a lot of talk today about your truth and my truth. There is no truth but God's truth. In fact, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, the life. And to understand him, to know his thoughts, to know his feelings, to know his opinions, that is what matters above it all. We should be so devoted to theology, to the truth of God, that whenever we are exposed to how he thinks and feels about something, then instead of trying to change him to fit what we believe is true, we change so that we align with his truth. We've got to be devoted to adoration. These are the eternal things that are the most important. Worship and community and truth and last serving. We've got to be reaching for others around us. We've got to be looking for needs to meet while always going the extra mile to help. We are a serving church. We're going to love people in our community. We're going to look for ways to serve people both when we are in church together and when we're outside of church throughout the week to serve, to put the love of God on display. Listen, I know that there is a lot, there is a lot of opportunity for us to react in our world. And there's a lot of there's a lot in our world that we could criticize and that we could condemn and that we could debate over. But difference makers, which is really what the book of Acts is all about. It's about the church. It's about people. It's about difference makers. Difference makers do not get lured away, nor do they get loud. They get involved and they get invested. We got to get involved and invested in the mission and last, the thing I want to leave with you last is this. If you want to 
live a life that looks more like the book of Acts instead of the book of Reacts. You've got to do this. You've got to live principle driven. You've got to lead purpose driven. And you've got to love passion driven. Lasting success, which is the book of Acts, because we are a continuation of that church. We're here now in the 21st century, despite thousands of years of adversity and opposition, it's still going strong. Lasting success and meaningful accomplishment are achieved by ordinary people with extraordinary passion, extraordinary focus, and extraordinary commitment. This is what I believe it is time for acts. It's in time for it's 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 time for intentional, strategic, thoughtful, God saturated actions, not a response to something that happens, not a retort to some outcome. It's time for acts, culture shaping world impacting actions and activities. To act means to do, not wait for a cause and then do, not not wait for something that we don't like and then do. Do things for God because you're anointed to do it. Do things for God because you're called to do it. Do things for God because you're fully alive and you're flourishing, and you're wanting to live fulfilled. Do things for God because he told us to go into all the world and to love people and to reach for people and to serve people and to see people's lives change. That's what we're called to do. And it doesn't matter what happens in the White House. And it doesn't matter what happens in Hollywood. And it doesn't matter what happens in the United Nations. And it doesn't matter what's happening on social media and Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. We are not going to react. We refuse to get pulled away from what God has set before us. Whether it's persecution or pleasure, we will not react. We're going to stay the course. We've got our eyes on the prize. We're going to keep reaching. We're going to keep stretching. We're going to keep growing because if we will continue to act, incredible things are going to happen and we're going to have the kind of results that we read about in the book of Acts. So engage, go, act, stick to the playbook. Follow the plan and just see what God will do. You need to make a fresh start in your life today. I know that I do. I need to make a fresh start. I just need to surrender my life back to Jesus and say it's not about my goals. It's not about my mission. It's about your mission. I want my life to count. I want my life to matter. I want to experience the forgiveness that comes from Jesus and the fulfillment that comes from that same Jesus. And I want you to experience the same. Stop wasting your life chasing after things that don't matter. Come on, get back on track. The only thing that matters is what's eternal. The only thing that matters is what you do for God. The only thing that lasts is what we do for His name and for His fame. So come on, surrender with me today. I want to pray with you. Let's make a fresh start in this moment. And everything can change. You can step away from where you are right now with a, a fresh understanding of what you need to do and the God that's going to be with you every step of the way in order for you to accomplish. But Jesus, I thank you for your word. And I just pray that you would help us be like these men and women that we read about from Acts 1 all the way through Acts 28. I pray that you would help us to just stay focused. And I hope that you will keep us on fire. And God, I pray that as you work through us, as we keep the main things, the main things, that we will experience un- told blessings 
an incredibly significant result. We'll give you praise for it in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. I hope that you see that the fresh start that you've made today is setting yourself up for future success. This is not a temporary thing. You are receiving something that is long lasting, that impacts many generations. And the future of your family and God's blessing on it can be traced back to the decision that you made today. So I'm proud of you for making that fresh start with God. Maybe it was for the first time for the first time in a long time, whatever your story, we're thrilled. There's a link coming up below that says Fresh Start. Click it. Give us your information because we want to send you a free resource. It's a book called Following Jesus. And it's going to outline for you how to be a success in your faith, how to grow stronger, how to go deeper, to experience all that God has for your life. Don't just settle for something that's on the surface. He's got so much for you. The best is yet to come. We applaud you. We're thanking God for you. We're here for you. You have a church family now, even though you're connected with us digitally, we're your family. We're here for you. Some people that are chatting and that are in the chats, they can connect with you more as well. We're just here for you and we love you. So thank you today for worshiping with all you've got, for listening with all you got. I hope you took some notes. Thank you for giving today. It's been an amazing week. And we're going to continue this whole look at the book of Acts next Sunday. It's going to be so powerful. Tell someone about it. Invite someone to join you. Meet us here. If you're able, join us in person. It's even better. But we're looking forward to having you next weekend as we continue this whole book of Acts series. And until then, go and make your life matter. Keep acting. Keep being proactive. Don't get sidetracked by what's going on around you. God's got something big for your life and just keep after it. And until next Sunday, make your life matter. We love you. Have an awesome week.